Kardashian walks the streets in a see-through. It's just a re- Since the beginning of the Industrial Revolution, we've put enough greenhouse gases in the atmosphere that we've raised the Earth's temperature by one degree Celsius. There is no planet B. There is no planet blah, 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 blah. This is not about some expensive, politically correct, green act of bunny hugging or blah, blah, blah. Build back better, blah, blah, blah. Green economy, blah, blah, blah. Net zero by 2050, blah, blah, blah. Net zero, blah, blah, blah. Climate neutral, blah, blah, blah. Our hopes and dreams drown in their empty words and promises. Of course, we need constructive dialogue, but they've now had 30 years of blah, 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 and where has that led us? Thousands of young activists converged on Milan this week, some 400 from around 190 countries. They're set to engage with policymakers in the hope of hammering out possible solutions. Ugandan youth delegate Vanessa Nakate was comforted by Thunberg after demanding that world leaders take action. It's time for our leaders to wake up. It's time for our leaders to stop talking and start acting. It's time to count the real costs and it's time for the polluters to pay. It's time to keep the promises. No more empty promises. No more empty summits. No more empty conferences. It's time to show us the money. It's time, it's time, it's time. And don't forget to listen to the most affected people and areas. Thank you. The new Ram 1500, Motor Trend's truck of the year for an unprecedented three years in a row. Experience the ultimate in 4x4 power and performance with 5.7 liter V8 Hemi engine, Parkview rear backup camera, leather seats. They are proceeding faster than we predicted. If the seas just rise by five to nine meters, you're gonna to have to put a wall around the entire city. But even if we were to do that for New York City, could we do that for the entire East Coast? The coastal regions will basically become uninhabitable. The youth feels a sense of institutional betrayal brought on by their leaders. Well, of course they do, because they're not idiots and they have been betrayed by their so-called leaders, just as with every one of the previous generations of Americans, at least for the last hundred years or so. It's interesting that young people have got it figured out, whereas you could argue that boomers like me haven't yet got it figured out that all is going swimmingly so far. From a sample size of 10,000, nearly half of the young people surveyed some 40, more than 45%, say their feelings about climate change negatively affect their daily life and functioning. That's a big deal, to negatively affect your daily life and how you function as you go through the day. That's huge. So for those of us who haven't been to COP, what's it like? Stunningly intense. Uh, heads of state, in and out, presidents, prime ministers, you've got their enormous entourages, the people who are actually doing a lot of the negotiation. You've got uh, action advocates as well, the protesters outside, you've got security operation, which is absolutely enormous. The head of the negotiations in Paris once said to me, and this is Cristiana Figueres, she said to me, it is akin to herding cats. You've got basically all walks of society, all talking about one issue. What was the first cop you reported from? Well, here's the thing. I've been to dozens of energy meetings over the last decade, but CNBC has actually only attended two COP meetings in the last 12 years. Now, the first was seen as a very unsatisfactory outcome. That was the COP15 that Jeff Cutmore went to in Denmark. It just didn't work. You had antagonism between emerging countries and the United States. There was nothing binding about it. I think the ambition's there, but it's just the reality of what's going on in the emerging world compared to the developed world. The developed world has the finance to do this. It has already industrialized. 
Whereas a lot of the emerging nations, India being the great case in point, it was in 2015, it will be in 2021, it doesn't have the same socio-economic position, as you say, it doesn't have the same wealth, it's not at the same stage of industrialization. A report released before the COP26 summit said that only one country, the Gambia, is on course to meet the one and a half degrees Celsius target, while momentum has stalled for other countries such as Singapore and Russia. No! Are you insane? Stop attacking. Immediately. <laughs>